Hello, Casey Ferris here. I make videos on DaVinci Resolve here on the internet. Today is a really big day because they just announced Resolve 18. Let's take a look at some of the features. This isn't gonna be a big old video, but this is gonna be a little video about, uh, I don't know, just some thoughts, some reactions, some excitement, some, I don't know, I'm a nerd. Are you a nerd? Do you wanna be nerds with me? Let's nerd. Okay, so Resolve 18, here are the new features. So uh, biggest one I would say in my mind is the cloud collaboration. This is really, really cool. Uh, if you haven't seen the announcement or anything, uh, basically what this is, is it lets you share Resolve projects in between people. You've, you've been able to do this for a really long time, but you can do this anywhere in the world and it's based on a cloud service. So really what it is, is you pay $5 to have like a collection of projects in the cloud and Anybody anywhere in the world that you share this with, um, as long as you have a way to send them the media, they can collaborate with you in real time inside of Resolve. So you can be working on an edit and you can share it with a colorist and the person doing color can color grade while you're doing editing and their color grades will show up in your timeline as you're editing. It's absolutely nuts. They've had this kind of thing for a long time with local networks. You'd have to set up a server. You'd have to know a bunch of technical stuff. Honestly, I never set that up because there's so much technical stuff to know. I'm just like, I don't have time for I'm not going to do that. But this is really cool. You pretty much just up here in the project manager, there's three little icons here. And if you click on cloud, you can sign into a library, which is what they're calling databases now. And you can make a project and it works just like a project that you would have on your computer, but it's hosted on the cloud. So anybody who you've shared this library with can access these projects and mess with them. Pretty freaking cool. The other thing that's really cool is the Blackmagic proxy generator. This is a program that will not only transcode proxies where you don't have to open up Resolve to transcode proxies, but it will also use a watch folder. So you can tell it just a folder on your system. And when you drag media into it, it will automatically make proxies. And the cool thing is, is that it puts those proxies in a specific place based on where the media is. And so Resolve, if you have these proxies made, it will always know where the originals and where the proxies are because they're kind of related to each other. Really cool. This just kind of makes the whole proxy workflow a lot simpler. It kind of standardizes a lot of things and you don't have to open up Resolve to do it. But what's really cool is I think you might have to use their specific storage. I'm not sure, but um, you can actually open up this proxy generator on multiple different machines using the same network and you can kind of do a render farm. They'll all generate proxies for a separate clip. So if you have something like a computer lab or something, you could have everybody open up this proxy generator uh, for the shared storage and burn through, you know, hundreds of clips in not very long, you know, really, really cool that there's that ability. Simplified proxy workflow. So uh, there's a little menu here in the upper right of the viewer that will let you pick whether you want to use proxies or use camera originals. It was kind of janky before uh, in 17, you would have to go up here to playback and select use proxies if available. And it was kind of hidden and they're just, it wasn't a great way to do it. Intelligent media management just makes things a lot easier to reconnect to your media. You don't have to um, relink it every time that you share a project or anything. Super cool. I'm not 100% sure on how this works right this second, but I know that any kind of updates to media management is always really, uh, really welcome in Resolve. Shared project libraries, we kind of talked about with the cloud. This is really cool, remote monitoring streaming. So you can actually stream your monitor to any display in the world if you have uh, the IP address and all of that stuff. Super high quality. That's gonna be really great for you know remote color grading sessions, things like that. Those are kind of the big things with cloud collaboration. We also have some updates for color. Object mask, uh, which is a lot like the magic mask, which is, you know, crazy anyway. But object mask just lets you select specific objects in the scene and you can do different colors on them. Let's take a look at something like that. Here in this first uh, build of Resolve 18, I don't actually see that. Um, it's supposed to be in the magic mask palette, but I don't see it. So maybe they have that turned off or something. We also have depth map and Resolve Effects Refine. This is, I believe these are things that you need studio version for, but let's just see. Look at that. That automatically makes a depth map. This is really cool. 
This is like the coolest, man. This just lets you generate a depth map from just a piece of footage. And I don't know how they do that, but um, that's pretty awesome. So we can do stuff like compositing, I guess. Like, let's just go ahead and make a new node and we'll just bring that off to the side and let's do our fast noise. If you've ever used fast noise in Fusion, should make a ton of sense. So let's take the output of this depth map and put that into our fog and we'll invert this so that the fog is only farther away. Interesting. So we can put this fog anywhere in the distance. We can put it behind our guy. You know, and it's not perfect, but like, that's pretty cool. That's absolutely wild that you can do that in the color page. I mean, I, I don't, that's really neat. We can track moving warped surfaces. Bring up the surface tracker. We'll do a little bit of uh, tracking here. And we'll track this back and forth, see how it goes. Add an input here. Just see how that works. That's pretty cool. Look at that. So obviously this is not the, the best mask nor the better th best thing to put on that shirt, but that does a pretty good job of hanging onto the shirt. Like I didn't even really know what I was doing. I just kind of guessed at it and it looks pretty sick. That's pretty amazing. We also have some enhanced beauty features, which is really cool for edit. We have more support for subtitles. So if you're making a lot of subtitles, there's some good updates there. You're able to reverse transitions now. You can look at a lot more cameras at the same time. You can put in chapters for YouTube and QuickTime. Now for Fusion, so GPU accelerated paint. So, allows paint strokes to be generated and displayed in real time. Ooh. For a more intuitive approach when performing cover-up work or graphic design, instant visual feedback allows you to assess your work. I think this is going to be one of those things that that were like, "Oh, didn't it didn't it always do that? Isn't that a thing?" <laughs> <laughs> I love updates like that though, because it just, it just helps everything make more sense, you know? Okay. So if we did a paint and we were to clone something like clone this out right here, I've used paint before. Okay. We can paint that out. I haven't used the paint tool a whole lot, but it does seem pretty, uh, pretty snappy. I definitely do remember paint being not so snappy. Maybe I'm completely missing this. I'm not sure. Text and shape acceleration. Now that I'm familiar with. Let's see how this goes. Let's grab our text plus. And let's see how quick that works. Oh, baby. Okay. That is the real deal. I know this seems so stupid. Like, it's like, this is one of those, like, yeah, I always used to do this. But like, yeah, in Resolve 17, you would have to cache this first, really, to play it back, most likely. Or it wouldn't play back very well, anyway. But now this is like, let's see if we can merge a couple over here. Okay. Dude, look at that. It plays back. This is great. <laughs> That's going to make titles so much better, so much easier. Oh, so good. Fairlight. They have a ton of stuff in Fairlight. Oh my goodness. A lot of stuff with Flexbus, Atmos stuff. You can decompose nested timelines in all kinds of really detailed ways. Really awesome. And they don't outline a bunch of the stuff for Fairlight here, but there, there are a lot of things that are super nice in this update. Things like being able to, I'll just add a bunch of tracks here. I probably don't need 84. <laughs> Things like this, okay? So you have your EQ, right? And let's say whatever, you know, for whatever reason you have your EQ set. You can right click on this and copy and right click somewhere else and paste. Again, it's one of those things where it should have always done that, but oh, so good. So nice to actually be able to do that. You can do the same thing with dynamics, which is something I ran into all the time. You know, so I'd have some kind of dynamics on my dialogue here and I want to copy them to another one. Um, and you could kind of do it with um, saving a preset, but now you can just right click, copy, right click, paste. You can also click it once to disable it, which is super helpful. So good. So good. Another thing that's really cool is if you open the index, 
You can rearrange tracks just by moving them around, which I believe is new, but you can also put your buses in the middle of your tracks so that you can kind of group things together in a more intuitive way. Super nice. This is something that I've definitely missed from Fairlight. There's also a lot of other little things, but you guys, Resolve 18, check it out. It's in beta right now. What feature are you most excited about? Let me know down in the comments and maybe we'll do a video about it. Maybe we will. Maybe we just will. Hope you have a good day.